I saw a hand on the ground through my binoculars. I see a hand, a huge hand, huge hand. When I took my binoculars away, I could see nothing else there. There was no hand, there was nothing there. So I put him back up, I could see the hand, and that's all I could see. It looks like it's sitting behind a plant or a bush, a big bush, and the hand is kind of just sticking out on the ground, like propping him up. You know, like now I'm onto the hand, I see the hand, I'm like, okay, I got, you know, there's something here. When I don't look through the binoculars, when I look through my regular eyes, it's glistening like it's morning dew and the sun's shining through it, but there's nothing there. I could put my binoculars up, look at it, and it looks fine. I take them away, and it glistens. But you only saw it when you were when you were looking through the binoculars. Like I said, like once you get to the point, like where you see the eyes that are glowing red, I don't know. You start to wonder what else is possible. Zach to the show. Zach emailed me a while back with some really interesting experiences he's had, and I can't wait to hear about them. Start us off where it all began, man. Uh, you're in Washington, I believe you said. Is is this where your uh, experiences took place? Yeah, they all, the, everything um, is happening within like a, a really pretty close area. My very first experience, I, I live in. Um, in Squim, which is on like the north side of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Um, so my first experience was um, starts out like a lot of these stories do, which is like pretty ironic. I, I mean, every time I hear these stories and someone says, starts talking like this, I'm like, yep, that really happened. But we went down and fished in this. Um, we walked down to this spot up on the upper Dungeness River. So we walked way down to this the road was washed out for about, I don't know, two years maybe. So they're like, I don't think there have been very many people down in this area. But me and my buddy walked down there. We walked down there and, and fished for a couple hours. On the way down, nothing weird happens. We were, you know, nothing that sets off our our alarm bells or I mean everything is totally normal. On our way back up, we started hearing something with stuff like it sounded like someone's walking next to us, paralleling us out. Yeah. Yeah. Like these kind of, this is what, you know, you hear this all the time in these stories. It's crazy. I don't know why they're always paralleling you, but that, that exact thing happened to us. We were kind of on guard a little bit already because when we were walking out, we saw what we thought was a fresh cougar track that was kind of following our tracks going in. Oh, man. Yeah. So we didn't notice anything on the way when we were walking down. And I'm, I'm guessing you, you, from the top where my truck was parked to where we walked down to the river was probably about, I don't know, half a mile. But you walk down this washed out old logging road and there's you can just tell no one's been on this road forever. But anyways, you know, we're done fishing. We're walking back up. We, we hear some some branches popping. You know, it sounds like someone's just walking right by you. Whatever it was, it felt like we should be able to see it. We never did. We ended up finding out I don't know. Almost up towards my truck, we found a footprint, and I think I sent you a picture of that. Anyway, so we found this footprint up there, and like, and so the picture there's a um, a size eleven boot. That's my buddy's boot right next to it. So I, I mean, it shows you how big that footprint was. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, that's on a logging road. So that footprint was actually almost a full inch into the ground. So whatever it was was super heavy. But anyway, so we just, me and my buddy, we kind of got into this routine. Like, wherever we heard the stick pop, we would just stop. And one of us would point, like, to exactly where we heard it. And at one point, whatever it was took off running. And I I would guess it was about, like, 15 steps. It went from, from one side of us and 15 steps. It went all the way to the other side of us. And then it was gone. And that was the last we heard of it. Behind you or in front of you? Did it cross the road? It, it went behind us, but it was like, so we were kind of like in this routine where after walking up this hill, 
you know, we're, we we got spooked out when we started hearing these, you know, whatever it was, we'd hear like a pop. Yeah. Whatever it was, it sounded like it was bipedal. And then all of a sudden it just went, like at one point we were pointing at it and it just went pop, 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 pop. And all of a sudden it was just gone up the hill behind us and to the other side. You never saw any like brush moving or anything like that? No, no, we didn't. I mean, it, it, it happened in a wind too. It just was like, it was super quick. You could feel the, the ground vibrate Wow. with the steps. Yeah. It just was, I don't know. All that just happened quick. And at that point I've never had any kind of Bigfoot stuff in my life ever. I mean, that was like, that was the first thing from our mind. We had no idea what it was. Just kind of like, then we found the footprint maybe about like a half hour after that, almost more at the top of the trail. And that kind of like got us going on it. At that point, I did like a thing on Facebook where I posted a picture of the of the footprint. Yeah. It just turned into this big thing where I was like, I got a bunch of people reaching back to me. That kind of set me on like, well, maybe there's something really going on up there. And a couple of people reached back to me and told me that they've had encounters up there. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, that was kind of like, okay, so maybe I'm not going crazy here. What did your buddy think that was with you? He thought the same thing. You know, we were both kind of in the same boat. We we were we were both on the cougar track at first between the footprint and the sounds of the, you could tell whatever it was, was walking by us was like, was not a cougar. It was not something, it was walking with like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you're not really going to hear a cougar if it's like paralleling you, <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. I I assume you're like from the area. Had you heard any Bigfoot stuff prior to this? No, I had it. That's the weird part. Like, I, you would have after after I started having these. You know, like after I started having the other encounters, and, and I got into touch with people around here. Then I started hearing a bunch of stuff, but at, at that point, I had never heard one one story or anything. Huh. Yeah, super crazy. I just know, like, you know, there's like an entire uh, research group or whatever that's kind of based out of the Olympic Peninsula called the Olympic Project, and I've got a lot of friends out in Washington that do this. So I was just curious, you know, like how it is out there if, Bigfoot is just something you grow up with hearing about, or if it's still kind of like contained within the Bigfoot community, like it is here. No, I, I think in one, I think especially around here, it's a little more than, than the normal community. But I also think that, uh, I don't know, like I, I talked to um, a couple of those guys from the Bigfoot or from the Olympic uh, research project. Shane Corson, I think me and him were talking for a little minute and, and then Ron Moorhead too. I like, I had lunch with Ron Moorhead a couple of times. He actually lived right pretty close to me here in Squim for a little bit. And I sent him a friend request and, and we ended up talking and then we ended up going out to lunch a couple of times and yeah, just like a great guy. Super, super great guy. <laughs> I mean, Ron Moorhead is like one of the legends of the Bigfoot world. That's cool, man. All right. So, what is the next thing that happened? Because, like, you mentioned some stuff in your email, man, that I've been waiting to hear. It gets weird. That's the thing. Like, the first story is so, um, I don't know if it's said basic. It's not basic. It's common. Yeah. Where everybody, you know, that the parallel story, like, that's super common. Right. Basically, what happens after this is, like, it just sends me on this, on this whirlwind, like, where I'm, like, just going up there as much as I can um, and just spending a lot of time up there. Same area. In the same area, yep. Was, all this stuff happens, like, within, I would say, maybe, like, a, a three-mile square area. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty close. It's all up at the top of the um, Dungeon S River area. Here's here's a really, really crazy one. And we were up there, and we are sitting up there, and there was, like, this little cave area, and we see these two glowing red eyes. Inside the cave. Like inside the cave, like so. I never, I never saw what the glowing red eyes represented, but they were, they were definitely. This was probably, I don't know, it was midday. So it, it wasn't like it was, you know, it was some kind of reflection. It was midday, but you could totally see the. They, they look like a, um, like a tail light. You know, like how red a tail light is. Yeah. It was like that red. Wow. Then there was like these little white. Um, 
they look like um, big cotton balls. So there's like a bunch of these white cotton balls spread out around kind of like the entrance of the caves. Okay. Like as we're like we're looking at this, you're kind of you're kind of piecing this together as it as like you're you're looking at it, you see like white cotton ball, bomb bomb bomb, glowing red eyes, what the heck? And then you see um um like a head of a sheep. And it looked like it came out to be look looked like a I can describe this right. It looked like a like a set up like a scarecrow. I don't know what it was set on, but there was like part of the the sheep was set up with the head sticking up, pointed out kind of by the entrance of the cage. And then it had a bunch of those little white comp balls. When you start looking at the comp balls, they looked like they were chunks of the sheep that were torn apart into pieces. Cause you can see like pieces of them. They were like red on the backside, like blood was tied to them. Oh man. Yeah. And this is like just a typical like sheep that you would see on somebody's farm. So here's the other crazy part of that. Was like if you're driving up to this road to this spot, like if if we were just to drive up and then we're going up there, you pass like one of the last houses going up once you hit the logging roads. One of the last homesteads used to have these sheep up there. Now in the spot where the sheep were, there was a tree that was upside down jammed in the ground. Oh wow! So the roots were sticking up upside down. It wasn't that big of a tree. Like, I'm not saying it was like a, you know, like a huge tree. It was, I mean, a couple of kids might have been able to do that. Yeah, but still, that's that's like something that you hear about sometimes in Bigfoot areas. Yeah, right. And that's what I've seen. Yeah, I've seen that before on, on like, on shows and stuff. So, you know, at the time, like, when all this stuff is happening, I have no idea. Like, I'm all piecing this stuff together, like, years later. But, yeah, that was, like, something that was, like, super wild. I actually had a really cool video of that for a long time, but I ended up losing it. And I'm, like, super bummed about that. Did the eyes, like, move or anything? Uh, they were, yeah, they did move. Yeah, there was movement in the eyes. You know, they were, the, the cave itself wasn't that big. And the cave is still there. Like, if you were here with me, I could take you up there right where it happened. But this was like, so that was the second thing that happened after seeing the footprint. The third one, though, was when we, we had our, the first sighting. Had a girlfriend, and her friend was super interested. And it's like, we have to imagine that, like, at this time, I'm, like, obsessed with it. Like, I'm trying to get anybody, everybody to go up there. Like, I want to show everybody this. Like, this is how I was at that. I'm not like that anymore. But at that time, I was like, I, anybody, I'll take anybody up there. I just wanted to show them, what, like, what I've been seeing. Right. And so my my girlfriend's best friend at the time, she was willing to go up there. So we go up there one morning. We're driving up, and I just got in this new um, Toyota Tacoma. I think it was an O2. It had the extended. It was an extended cab, but it wasn't the four door. So like you're pretty, whoever's in the back seat is sitting pretty close to you. Yeah. And so we're driving up, and so we passed the house where the sheep was gone with the upside down tree. And then there's one more, there's a couple, actually there's a couple more house homesteads up there past that. We're almost to the very last homestead and she's sitting like kind of behind me. She just starts freaking out. Oh my God, stop, stop, stop. She's just whacking me on the back of the head. I hit the brakes and she says that she sees one walking through this field. And it takes me, uh, it takes me a while to see it, maybe 15, 20 seconds but I finally do see it, and she's right. There's like a nine foot tall Bigfoot walking along this tree line, going the opposite way that we were going, probably seventy yards away. It's going after these two deer up there, and these two deer are grazing in this field, and so it's like it's just walking towards these two deer. I stop. I get out. We jump out, and it sees us. Like I, all the commotion when I stopped my truck, it, it realized we're that we had seen it probably it dropped down to all fours just paused in this position of all fours looking at us for like i don't know like maybe three seconds two seconds it's really hard to tell in that moment because you don't like on one hand it feels like it's like three hours long but on the other hand it's like you're probably like it might have been a half a second i don't even know like it just was it was pure chaos in this moment but it looked down and and my personal thought was it was trying to make us think it was a bear. 
And once it realized like we weren't buying it, it just stood, it, it went right back up, stood back up, walked right between the two deer. Now this is crazy. I've never seen a deer do this in my life. And I've seen a ton of deer in my life. The deer like arc their backs. Like when cats get scared. Yeah. You know, like how when cats get scared, they arc their back and all right. their hair stands up. Yeah. These deer did that. They just arced her back. It could have grabbed either the deer or walk within like a foot or two of them, walk right between the two of them, hit the tree line and just drop to all fours and was gone. I never saw it again. Wow. Like the deer were just like frozen in their place. Yeah. They're frozen in fear. They're like, holy shit. Don't see me. Don't look at me. That's crazy. Yeah. I never, and I still, I've never seen a deer do that to this day where they're, their back was like fully arced like that with the hair standing up. What color was the Bigfoot? Uh, it was light brown, super light brown. Light brown. Yeah, like super light brown, and it was super skinny too. It looked like um like a basketball player than it did like the the patty one. Yeah, it was super skinny, like but it was super muscular too. And and I at my best guess, I don't know how good I am at measurements, but I think it was about nine feet tall. Uh, it wasn't short. It was like the hair on it long or shorter or what did the hair look like? You know what the, like the weird part is, and I hate even saying this, I feel like most people are just roll their eyes, but it actually looked a lot like the, the Harry and the Henderson's one. Oh, wow. Okay. I know it's stupid. Like I hate, I hate even saying that cause I feel like a lot of people right now are just like, Oh God, whatever. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's just how it looked like when you're trying to explain what these things look like, it's difficult, man, because I mean, there's nothing really to compare it to. So you have to like draw comparisons to like things that you've seen. And right, right, right. a lot of people are familiar with Harry and the Hendersons and, you know, and it was 70 yards away too. So it wasn't like it was right there, but I don't know. So the same day, about 20 minutes later, I had my next encounter, which is like super weird, right? I mean, <laughs> it can happen. Yeah, well, it did happen. This is the one that, so if you look at it, like if we were looking at a map as like a crow flies, or I guess as a Bigfoot walks, it would be like where, where these two sightings happen really close together. But the road took like a long way to get back to that other, the other spot. And so when I saw the the next one, and like, mind you, this is probably, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes later. It wasn't very long. There was a little one eating a deer on the side of the road. Like roadkill? I don't know. I don't know. But it like, the, so here's the weird part, too. And this is another part that's like, I lose a lot of people at this. Because, like, you're, you're going to think... Why didn't the Sasquatch just walk off? And, like, he had to hear my truck coming. Because, you know, on a logging road, you can hear a vehicle coming, like, forever. You know, you feel like you hear him, like, 10 minutes before they actually get there. I mean, you, you can sometimes, you know, the way the valley's shifting. So this one, you go around this road, you drop down to the river, cross the bridge, and you're kind of coming back up. And, like, so I'm right across from where, about this time, I'm right across from where I saw the other one. And I see a deer on the side of the road, um, a dead deer on the side of the road with his front legs in the air and his back leg. It's almost on his back completely with legs in the air. Mm -hmm. And it looked like um, something was stuck to his stomach. So, all right, so the legs are there, right? And it's like it's laying. So the head of this thing was laying right by the stomach of the deer with the body going down in the same direction as the deer's body. So I, I, I see this as it's going on. It takes a minute for it to process in my head. So I'm driving up in my truck. I see it. I see the deer in my, oh, you know, dead deer. And then there's something going on with the bottom of it. For, for a second, I thought it was a raccoon eating it. And then I realized it was way too big to be a raccoon. And so I jammed it in the park. And so this is how quick this all happens. I jam in the park. Now, mind you, I just had that last sighting like 20 minutes ago. So I'm already like, I'm like, my, I'm ready. I'm like, guns blazing. I'm ready to see. I want to see this thing. So I put it in park. I jump out of my truck. 
my truck was still moving when I jumped out. It, I did it so fast. I ran to the back of my truck and came around the back of it. And all I saw was the four hoods of the deer going over the hillside of this log. And it went dropped straight down to this hillside and was gone. Like it carried the deer off. It took the deer off, but it did it in like, I mean, I jumped out of that truck and I was around the back of my truck before my truck, while my truck was still moving almost. I booked it around the end because I wanted to see what was that, what was, what was on that deer. Because when I came around, when I pulled up to it, it was on the passenger side. So I, my truck kind of blocked it. When I first processed it, it was like on the passenger side. I was like, oh, shit. I pop it in the park and I jump around. You know, I mean, I did it as fast as I, as I humanly could possibly do. And that thing, to have that deer, to grab that deer in that time span, take it over that log and down the hillside in that period of time is like impossible. I don't know how I did it. And the thing was like laying on top of the deer, eating it or whatever. Yes. And it was like the same size as the deer body. Yeah. Yeah. So it must have been like super strong. Yeah. It's super fast. too. Like, I don't know. But whatever it was, was like, I figure it was probably about three or four feet tall, whatever it was, like comparing it to the deer. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the crazy part. I had, um, at this point, I was a bartender at a casino here um, in Squam at the time. And there was somebody I worked with that she knew somebody that was up here researching that was, I don't know if they were part of the Olympic project or they were part of some group up here that was researching them. And so the guy came and met me and I took him up to show him the spot where this happened, right? Yeah. Now, now what happened when the deer took the or when the Bigfoot took the deer over the hillside, I, and I always regret this. I was, like, too scared to peek over that edge. I wish I would have just looked over that edge and seen what I seen, but I was just a little bit too scared. So I took these, I took these two guys up there, and they found that they found the, um, the bones from the deer right on the right where that happened at. Oh, wow. On the bottom side there. And whatever it was, you know, took the took the deer bones and broke all the bones open and ate the bone marrow out of the bones. Huh. Now think how strong you got to be to do that. Have you seen a, a deer's rib cage? Yeah. The deer's not, rib bones. That's not easy to do at all. Oh, they're huge. Yeah. So I don't know. Like they were like, these guys were, I think they were kind of at first were like, this guy bullshitting us or not. And, you know, and then they found these bones, and these guys were like high five, clapping, and like, oh yeah, all right, we believe you. Take us to show us the footprint. And I'm like, yeah, oh, whatever, dude. And I told you, I told you guys. <laughs> that was my uh, that was my moment. The sun there, you know, I'm saying like, I told you guys. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a vindication there. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. What color was the smaller one? Uh, the, okay. So the smaller one, this one's kind of weird. Um, the smaller one was way browner. It reminded me of, um, I thought it looked a lot like, uh, like a Buffalo's hide or a Buffalo's fur. Okay. I don't know if that's fur, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was different. It was way different than the other one, but of course I was a lot closer to this one than I was the other one. So, and it was really fast too. So, but it reminded me of, um, you know, like um, the movie uh, Dancing with Wolves. Yeah. And in the in the um, natives give them that that blanket, that buffalo blanket. Right. Yeah. It reminded me of the the way that buffalo blanket fur looked. That's how his fur looked to me. Okay. So I don't know. That's just some. It's just what, the way it popped in my mind. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like how fast it was moving and like the size of it compared to like the deer carcass like that would i mean that's like super strong <laughs> that, right. that, that's crazy like i i mean a human you know couldn't do that the thing is if if we didn't find those deer bones down there i would have said like i would have questioned if that really happened that's how fast he got that deer over that thing because i've never moved quicker in my life when i got out of that truck and moved around there like I was like, I was, I was almost worried. I didn't put my truck all the way in park. It was, it was as fast as I can move. And he was gone. So, 
so did you like keep on going out to that place? Oh yeah. I spent a lot of time out there. A lot of time. I never had another sighting like those two, like that day. Um, I had a, I had kind of a, a weird um, cloaking experience that I've never, I think it was a cloaking thing, but I don't know, you know, like once I saw the, the glowing red eyes, then I know that, I know there's some weird stuff going on. So it's like kind of opens your mind to thinking like, what else is possible? Right. Are you okay to talk about it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I got into this routine where I would go out there and, you know, I would just sit, I would just sit, I would just go somewhere. And, you know, if I, even if I just sat in my truck, you know, I had like a couple pairs of binoculars that were like some that were like, not that, um, you know, that were just more like, um, for closer range. But I had this deal where I was looking through these binoculars one day. I was just sitting there in this little, in this little spot where I sat all the time and I could just scan this whole hillside and I was just scanning it and I saw a hand on the ground through my binoculars. I'm looking through my binoculars. I see a hand, a huge hand, huge hand. And I was like, holy shit, what's that? But when I when I took my binoculars away, I could see nothing else there. There was no hand. There was nothing there. So I put them back up. I could see the hand. That's all I could see. It looks like the hand is like, it looks like it's sitting behind a plant or a bush, a big bush. And the hand is kind of just sticking out on the ground, like propping him up like he's sitting on his butt. Just kind of leaning back with his arms back and his hands propping him up. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, so I'm, you know, like now I'm onto the hand. I see the hand. I'm like, okay, I got, you know, there's something here. And I'm trying to like just get a better picture. But then I realized when I look through the when I don't look through the binoculars, when I look through my regular eyes, it's like it's glistening like it's morning dew and the sun shining through it. Huh. But there's nothing there. And so I never, I mean, that's, you know, I never, I could put my binoculars up, look at it, and it looks fine, I take them away, and it glistens. And that was that. I don't know. So it was like you're only really able to see it through the binoculars. Yeah. Yep. If, yeah, if even. Man, I wonder if that had something to do with like the light or something, the way that the light traveled through the binoculars. Yeah, it, it, it reminded me of, like, when the sun shines through, like, if, if you saw, like, it just rained, and then the sun pops out, and the tree has a lot of a lot of dew on it, Yeah, and the way it kind of glistens through the tree. That's the way it reminded me of. But you only saw it when you were, when you were looking through the binoculars. That's crazy, man. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> that, would, that would probably freak me out pretty good. Like I said, like once you get to the point, like where you see the eyes that are glowing red, I don't know. You start to wonder what else is possible. You mentioned to me that you also had like a UFO sighting. Is that also in this area? This one was closer. This was down. Um, it's for, it's in the same area. It's definitely in the same area, but it's down. I mean, it's not. I would say it's maybe five miles away. That'd be the same area for sure. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that comes on that goes on around here. There was an article in the in the paper here, maybe about four years before this happened, where there was an event where they saw something rise out of the river that was about the size of a, a Volkswagen Beetle, and they had like eleven witnesses saw it. Pretty crazy. I mean, I what I saw was was absolutely out of everything that i've seen this one is the most craziest to me i saw what was like perfect triangle shape i would say it wasn't that it wasn't that big i would say it's probably i don't know i'd say 10 feet you know like as a triangle is so each side's 10 feet yeah and it was white and it was shining a light down straight down on the ground like a like a beam i don't even want to call it a beam it was just like a light that was shining down on the ground that was it it was shining down the ground so i'm driving my truck home i was staying at my girlfriend's house at that time i worked at a golf course so we're i don't know if 
I had to work at um, when I we started there. We started at like three in the morning, so I had to. You know, I was like, I was on the road early in the morning. I'm driving to work, and I see this thing, and I see it. So I just decided to start chasing it. So I see this light, and I find I track it down finally, and it's shining. When I pull up to it. I was like, I was on this main road. I turned off the main road and it's just sitting there and it's shining the beam down on this driveway, like this gravel driveway. And I turn onto the driveway and I'm going towards the beam, like the beam's right in front of me. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? It's not moving. Nothing's happened and the thing's still sitting there. I'm looking at this thing and I dropped the, the craft itself, like the triangle thing is white. It looks about, I don't know, it wasn't that thick, you know, like as a triangle, it looked maybe like it was like six feet thick. I couldn't see what was on top of it, obviously, but it's just sitting there, right? And so I'm like maybe 300 feet. I'm, I'm less than a football field from the, from, the, from the beam that's shining down or the light. That's just like hitting the driveway. Yeah, it's just this is a this is like a, a gravel driveway, and at the end of it, there's a big house at the end of it that had like a bunch of trees around it, so you couldn't really see the house. But it's just sitting there, shining down. It wasn't a beam. I don't want to say a beam. It was like a light, like a searchlight, like a spotlight. Okay. You know, it was just it was just illuminating the ground. And I'm like, God, what do I do here? So I do I keep going and like like I didn't want to get out of my truck. I just kind of itched for it a little bit. And then at one point it started vibrating. It starts shaking. And so it, as the, the vibrating gets more intense, like it, it picks up it just boom, 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 and then it just jumped. I'm like, that's what I would call it. a jump. It like it ramped up, like the vibrations ramped up and then it jumped about, I would say I did a mile, mile and a half away, and we're to the point where I saw where it stopped. And I backed up and I was going. It actually went back towards my work. So I was like, sweet, I'm going to go back towards my work. I'm still going to follow this thing again. And then it never let me get, I never got much closer to it again. Once I got within, I'd say, half a mile of it, it ramped up again and then it jumped like two or three miles. And then it went the opposite direction of my work and I had to go. So whenever you say jump, like it just like basically was like instantly like a mile away, but you like saw it move to that location. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it, you know, it ramped up. It, it looked like, you know, if you're like pulling your, like a rubber band back and you're going to shoot something, you know, yeah. it was like, that's what it was like. like bink, and it just shot over there. What color was the light coming out of it? Just like a regular white light. Yeah, just a white light. Now, the, the light underneath of it that was shining the light kind of had more of an orange tint to it, but the light that was coming down was clear. You would have thought it was just like a flashlight shining down. Huh. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, you know, if it wasn't like uh, one of ours. I don't know if it was definitely, a, you know, from some, from outer space. But, uh, right. But then the size of it, though, the way how small it was, like the thinking that if there's somebody inside that thing, they had they couldn't have been that big of a person. So that was the other weird part about it. So I don't know. Definitely rocked my world. Did this happen like after the Bigfoot stuff? Uh, yes, it did happen after that. And and that was the only like UFO incident that you've had. Like you haven't seen anything after that. No, no, that was the only one. There's been a lot of stuff that happened around here. There's a something that's like it's got some stuff in the papers. The squim rumbles. There's like a rumbling underneath the ground here. There's a lot of people think that there's like an underground something going on, but I don't know. I never seen nothing like that. I mean, I just like I said, that's the only thing I've ever encountered. It was a doozy, though. I just know that sometimes, like whenever people have like UFO encounters like that, sometimes like they start seeing them on a pretty regular basis or weird stuff starts happening. Like almost like these things, you know, tag the person or something and, you know, keep track of them or something like that. 
I definitely think that, I mean, for me personally, I'll speak for me. I, you know, it, it caused me to look up in the sky a lot more. And so I've seen a lot of weird stuff. I actually had a really crazy video. I'll send it to you if you want it, where I saw something in the sky that was like, I mean, it looks huge. You would think that there was, you would swear there was a mountain right there. And it was like a, like a, you know, like a ski resort on the top of a mountain, but there's, there is no mountain there. I'm sure of it. Huh. It just, it looks huge. It's like a fortress in the sky. Weird. Yeah. I've got a, a friend who, uh, used to be a police officer in Washington and actually had a UFO sighting. Uh, it was a call that he was on if I remember correctly, and he saw it go into a lake or something and then come back out. Yeah, Washington is well known for, like, weird UFO stuff, not just Bigfoot stuff. Obviously, it's known for Bigfoot stuff, but lots of UFO stuff happens in Washington. So that's that's really interesting, man. Yeah, I think it has. I went, Well, I don't. I wonder if it has something to do with, like, NORAD, you know, and all that, because, like, the... There's a lot of that. The um, our country's top airspace spots, or there's a couple of them here. I wonder if that's some good thing. Yeah, there's a there's a big, uh, basically like a giant radar station that uh, sends and receives signals out through the ocean to like submarines and stuff, and listens for submarines. And yeah, I've wondered if that maybe attracts some stuff in the area. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff around here. I I've, I've seen a lot of them, um, or not a lot of, but I see there's a bunch of them. Um, um, you call them orbs, and like the the orange orbs. Yeah, those those are super common around here. Really, super super common. Have you ever seen any of those out in that Bigfoot area? Yes, I have. I've seen two of them that were walking down the. It, they looked like they were walking. I don't know. It's weird. They were like coming down the hillside. They were side by side, like they were just kind of trucking down this road. All you saw was like the orange orbs stuff, and like you, there's no body to them. But you would swear they were walking. You know the way they're they were kind of bouncing, like the way their heads were kind of wow, 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 super weird. Yeah, I know some people that have seen like orange orbs in Washington. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I don't know what to think about the orb things. I don't know what those things are, but so many people see them. And they see them pretty often, especially in like Bigfoot areas. I don't know if there's a connection there or not. I know it's weird, huh? I think, I know, I think there is, but I I kind of dive into the to the weirdo side of the Bigfoot stuff. But like, I don't know how how to not to do that. If I've seen glowing red eyes, I know how to. <laughs> I've seen a UFO. I've seen a. I've seen all this weird stuff. Like I, like I don't know how to not fall on that side. There's nothing wrong with it, man. (laughs) There's no rules to this. You know, there's just a bunch of opinions and theories, but nobody really knows for sure. You're right. You're right. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your stories. I've enjoyed hearing them for sure. You've got some interesting stuff, man. Uh, So thank you. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. If you've had your own encounter with Bigfoot or something else you can't explain and you'd like to share your story, Send me an email at bigfootcrossroads at gmail.com. Check out the website bigfootcrossroads.com. You can find links to social media, past episodes, merchandise, everything you need, all in one place. And until next time, remember, there's something in the woods. (laughs) 